Hi, it's Amber. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. And guess what? It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. All we need to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Good luck. Guys, this is Amber with Double A Cron Files for your unsolved case. Today we're going to be discussing Bethany Murkowski. Bethany Murkowski disappeared from Gleason, Tennessee. She disappeared on Sunday, March 4th, 2001. She was 11 years old. At the time of the disappearance, her parents, Larry and Johnny, or Joni, we're going through a divorce. Her mother moved her from Gleason to Nashville to live with her mother's sister. Larry stayed behind in Gleason. He had been given a court-ordered visitation, which stated that he was allowed weekend visits and phone calls on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Joni had a a personal restraining order the restraining order against Larry so she was not able to do drop drop offs and pickups so she elected her sister to do that Friday March 2nd 2001 Joni's sister dropped Bethany off with Larry and then Joni states that Larry and Bethany mostly stayed in Gleason but did spend a few hours in Little Rock Kansas Joni did speak to Bethany Sunday morning on March the 4th at about 9.38. They both confirmed that she would be picked up at 5 p.m. that day by um, Joni's sister. She was supposed to meet Larry in Waverly, Tennessee at 5 p.m. However, Joni's sister was unable to reach the two by the phone when they were supposed to meet. Eventually, Larry called back stating that they stopped at Old Hickory Mall in Jackson, Tennessee around 2.30. Larry claims that he took a nap in the car while the 11-year-old girl went into the mall by herself. He later told authorities that she she did not return, he went to the mall looking for her. He stated that the search took hours. Larry finally reported his daughter missing to mall security between 5.30 and 6 p.m. This is approximately four four hours after initial stop and about 30 minutes after they were supposed to meet with the aunt. At this point, Jackson Police Department was notified. There was a police officer by the name of Kathy Ferguson that was on the case and she's now with the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. But at the time, she did <coughs> with another investigation. She said that she and investigators personally went into each store and collected every single surveillance tape from any store that had it. Joni and her sister and brother-in-law then went to the mall that night to join Larry and the daughter. Joni hoped that Bethany was hiding, but that was not the case. Agent Ferguson said that she combed through the tapes and conducted interviews with mall staffs and patrons and they were unable to confirm that Bethany was ever at the mall. Two days later on March the 6th, Bethany was officially missing and the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations be- became involved to broaden the scope and utilize more resources for the case. They later stated that they were not able to confirm that either one of them did come into the mall. There was not on the tapes. The only thing that to I was that they did make a trip and they stated that any tips and any information they initially had on her was vetted into the ground in 2001. Bethany's disappearance is still under investigation 
and tips do still come in. However, person of trust can be named. Joni still advocates for and she gets her name on every missing person that there is. She worked with the state representative to create Tennessee's Day, which falls on March 4th, the anniversary of that. At this moment in time, she would be 30 years old. What we do know is that her aunt's name is Lori Jackson, her mother's name is Joni Carter, her dad's name is Larry Markowski. We do know that at the time of the disappearance, she had brown hair, green eyes that sometimes looked blue. She had a mole on her left breast, and she often bit her nails when she was nervous. She was five feet. She weighed between 95 and 100 pounds. She was wearing a green t-shirt with blue or black jeans and black slip-on shoes. And she was missing her top and bottom baby molars. We did find out that the reason why Larry let her go to the mall alone is because he was comfortable with her with the mall um, saying that she was very mature and that sometimes that they would let her go roller skating alone. so he felt that she was to go into the mall alone. what was the security camera showing nothing they did not verify it did not show her ever in or exiting the mall so the father lied there's no well there's no definitive I believe he lied, but they, they can't prove that he's telling the truth or lying. But if she's not on the tape. I mean, if if they didn't see her walk in or walk out. That's why I feel like it's a lie. She, he said that he wanted to go to Claire's in the game room. And all he wanted to do was stretch out in the back seat of the van and take a 30 minute nap. And then when he realized that she was back, he went to go look for her. But still, but nobody ever saw her. Nobody ever saw her going in or coming out. Did they see the vehicle coming in? They There was no report on in the vehicle. I don't think there was video footage of the parking lot. I think it was just at the doors. In 2001. So yeah, she's our age. Yeah. She was five foot at that time. So she was pretty... She's pretty tough, so we can assume now, if she's still alive, yeah. she would be around five, between five three and five five. I would guess. I just if she was around five foot at eleven. Yeah, she could even be five eight. I mean, she's pretty. She's pretty tall. I mean, that's what my sister was close to five foot when she was around that age so and she's like five three now five three five four so yeah i just it hit home i chose this case because i currently live in tennessee and this girl it lived here in tennessee and we're about the same age you know i'm 30 i'm about to be 31 in a couple of weeks so like this case just makes me think about me because at that age in that time it was the same with me. Like I was <clears throat> everywhere, like outside all the time by myself. I would go into stores by myself. My mom would send me in to go get something for her. I'd go get it and come out, you know? So I was a, I was doing a lot of things by myself. So this makes me think about like, what if this was me? So Yeah, cause um, back then, like we were able to go to the stores by ourselves, even at 11. Yeah, we were able to survive. Like, at the same time, my mom never let me go into like a mall because it was it's too big to crowd it. Like, it was way too many people um, <clears throat> to go by myself. And then for him to say that he just wanted to take a thirty minute nap, like he didn't, he, like he woke up and he realized like it was a couple of hours later. No, he woke up realizing it was thirty minutes after he initially went to sleep that he woke up and realized she wasn't back. I'm thinking, okay, the most I did, like I rode all over my home on a bicycle by myself, but I never went into the mall by myself because one time um, a lady tried to kidnap my baby brother, my youngest brother at a mall. It was actually here at Opry Mills Mall in Nashville, Tennessee, back when, um, before it was renovated. And ever since then, like, 
my mom was on us. She was looking at us wherever we went. And, the, and that's the same with my kids. I'm like, uh-uh, we're going to stay together. You know, call my name. You know, we're, we can't let you out of the sight. My mom would never do this. I remember at the time, it was when there was um, a golf a golf course in the mall. And there was a big play place that you could climb up like a tree. And this, I remember it was an older um, blondish lady that took my brother off the thing and started running with him. My mom caught up with her and yelled at her and got my brother. So like, that's scary. It's, it's a real thing and it's home. Right. <clears throat> it just sounds iffy to me that if they don't have any footage of her going in, that means she would not be in the store there would be no stores that she would be in and so if there was no camera in the parking lot he could have easily done something to her before he arrived at the parking lot to do a uh, his story stating that he just wanted to take a 30 minute nap so there were several theories from podcasts Um, some podcasts stated that he arranged for them to go to New Mexico but he he says that that's not true because why would he come back to Tennessee when they were already in Arkansas why didn't he keep going so that I'm not too sure about what I think I hypothesize that possibly he left the girl in Arkansas with the quote unquote friend or friends of the friend it's something I believe she's in Arkansas I don't believe she's here in Tennessee but there were a couple of sightings of her here in Tennessee that the most potential because there's a lot of tips about her but a lot of them got debunked but these sightings were the most close to being her that we could assume so in April 2001 in East Tennessee there was a blonde woman with dark eyes she tried to enroll a girl in his description into school they described the woman as unkempt and with frizzy hair so probably probably like on drugs or homeless or something um, right later on a girl matching her description with three consecutive days in cleveland tennessee at a restaurant with the same woman by the time the police were notified the pair were boarded on a bus to moline when the bus stopped they were not on there so that's suspicious we don't know if this is the same girl but Either way, if two people get on the, the bus and they're not getting on the bus, what happened? They just disappeared in thin air. So that's suspicious. That's crazy. Um, they both, neither one of the parents have been ruled out, but they haven't also been named. Um, authorities think it could be either parent, but they, they're not sure. The only thing the authorities were sure about is that she did not run away. She was definitely abducted and I believe this is the longest running missing persons case in Tennessee that's documented because this has been 19 years that she's been missing I don't know I don't know if she would still be alive right now I wouldn't I mean it would be very hard for her to not be found out right it's just this case is it's it was intriguing to me for one it's from my home state you know, it's around my stomping grounds. Um, for two, it's a long open case, nineteen years. And for three, the tangible and the there's nothing that we can go on. All we have is some surveillance videos that show nothing, and a few tips that we can't be we can't say is definitive. Is the dad still living in Tennessee? I, the last resource I checked stated he was. Um, I just know I have. There's more about the mother's involvement, the mother being more proactive, more trying to find the daughter. And I'm, I'm thinking, I think that the father left her in Arkansas to spite because of the divorce. That's my what I'm thinking because the mother was granted temporarily full full custody and temporary visit you know, the visitation and so they get it fixed you know whatever they were going to set out in their mediation or what but 
I'm not sure. Like, I just feel like he's hiding something. I, I, I feel like he knows what there is. Mm. It's it's a crazy. I don't know. I, I don't. I didn't see any conspiracies, but this is on the FBI's most. You know, they're on their missing persons list, so they want um, people to be on the lookout and contact the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at tips to TBI at tn gov or the Jackson Police Department, and I can list those numbers and descriptions um i really don't want to call them out but i just feel i feel kind of definitely heartbroken because i have children i have three children and it makes me want to like chain them to me when i go places but i can't do that it's just it's just very fearful now because the more you hear about these missing children like there's so I w- when I was researching her, there were so many missing children popping up that it was kind of overwhelming to conduct, right. you know, information on her because I'm like, why is there so many children missing? And for I mean, for an 11 year old, that means like she couldn't have been abducted by really by a stranger really without getting noticed. Because if you're talking about a big mall, she's 11, so she won't be going willingly. No. And her mother taught her to make a seat. The kid can scream and yell. So her mother doesn't believe that it could have happened in a mall because of the reaction she would have given. So that... I'm with you on that. It would have been a scene. Yeah, because, I mean, she's 11. It would have been a little bit more difficult if she was, like, say, five. Because, you know, we, at that age, we think that every adult is okay. And we'll believe if an adult says, hey, your mom's over here, you know, and we go with them. But at 11, she already knows that her dad's not there with her. She, um, her mom's, uh, or her aunt's coming to pick her up. And her dad's out in the van, supposedly. And so nobody could really abduct her without anybody noticing. Exactly. And that's what makes the case strange because the fact that he claims that it was the mom. This is what I don't understand. If the meeting was supposed to take place at 5 o'clock, it's 5 o'clock now. Aunt is calling you repeatedly. You have not re- until after around six o'clock to let her know that you stopped at the mall at two thirty. You didn't even go. You you quote napped for thirty minutes. So why didn't you enter at all during that time? That's why I thought that he was asleep the entire time, and he happened to wake up. Nope, he was. And realized it was a few hours later. So, and that's what's suspicious to me because he was awake. He only took a quote unquote thirty minute nap. If that And so he just decided, Oh, I'm gonna let her be in there for four hours. I have no clue and I have no clue. He just said after, you know, he woke up thirty minutes later and realized she wasn't out there, then he went to search. Yeah, I highly doubt that. I honestly think he did something to her. And he said he took hours to search the mall. I mean, at that point, if you're coming in 30 minutes after she went in, going if she was in the mall, there's chances that you're not, you know, you're going to ask each other. There's a lot of people there or she could be at one end as you're going, she could be out. So I think him searching the mall, I, honestly, I think it's highly unlikely that he did that because... Yeah, I mean, the, the video cameras, it all goes back to the video cameras. If they did not see her enter in the enter in yeah. at all you know then I would have immediately called him in as a suspect because like I mean she never entered the mall it means she's not in the mall if she's never entered it how are you going to go through a building exactly without so, doors 
abducted by aliens, I believe that she was dropped off in Arkansas. That's what I, I mean. Stuck to that. This is in my heart. I just feel like that's what happened. Either that or he killed her. But I don't feel like he killed her. I mean, he might have hurt her to the point where she got hurt enough to where she passed away. Maybe. You know, there was um, talk a few years back about um, a couple that would keep a daughter, uh, not a daughter, somebody they abducted and they would keep chained up in a shed. And they would both like perform sexual acts on her. Oh, yeah, and she ended up having a child? Yeah. Yeah. So I maybe it's something like that. Maybe he's got her chained up somewhere. I mean, might have, it may have been. If she, Like I said, if she's still alive, if she's still alive, she would be age 30 because she was born, if she was 11 at 2001, that's our age. Then... She would be, if she was already five foot at that time, she would roughly be between five three and five five, most likely. Yeah. And then, I mean, which is honestly a very common height. Here's what I'm thinking. Maybe, maybe it's a different angle here. Um, at 11, your mind is still developing and it's still moldable. Maybe at her abduction, her name was changed and she got groomed to believing she's a whole different person and probably um, has memories of her family shoved out of her head. How long was she with her dad before this abduction? Just a... a I think he only had her Saturdays and Sundays. So it was just a weekend? Yeah, he could only have her on the weekends. So he, they stayed in Gleason for a few hours and then went to Arkansas and came back. Did it state why he was going to Arkansas or why he took her to Arkansas? Just to visit a friend. Okay, so she got either taken by that friend got dropped off did they talk to this friend in Arkansas there's no report of an interview with them they just said that they could confirm that it did happen so what I was thinking was since she's and she probably got a new identity she's probably grown up as a whole different person and probably didn't even know that she was a missing person that would be very hard if she was only with him for Saturday and Sunday because then that means she was home during the week yeah and her mom would notice something so I'm saying as she was abducted not before then she abducted and then they go oh I'm, oh yeah that's very that's very plausible because I mean you're known to there's a lot of people that are known to like abduct people keep them in basements no tv no sense of outside world nothing and depending on like what they're doing to her you know she won't know her name she won't know like what's going on like she won't even know that people are looking for her either that or she's fed that her mom died and she got nobody else so i'd like to just know that this little girl told her mom bye and I love you for the last time at 11 years I mean that always scared my mom too that's why she always told me like there was me and my sister have a code with my mom so that way if anything would have happened to her and someone had to come and get us they would know the code my dad knew the code too yeah. So, you know, basically they would tell this person this code and that's when we know that it would be safe because nobody else knew the code. Yeah. I think it's very 
So, you know, and we weren't allowed to tell our friends the code. We weren't allowed to say anything about our code. It was within us. Of course, now that we're older and we're out of the house. <laughs> very, but um, Because then if an adult comes up to you, you're like, what's the code? And can't go with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If they don't know what I'm talking about, yeah. then nope. my mom was like, don't ever get in it doesn't matter if you know them it doesn't matter if you know we've gone to parties with them because you know my mom was very active and still very active in the Filipino community yeah. in Shelbyville and Murfreesboro and in Nashville so like I knew a lot of um who I call my aunts and uncles but aren't technically my aunts and uncles and so like we all knew each other we would all go to each other's house but she would always stay regardless of who I know if they do not know the code do not get in the car that's so true because that's how a lot of people end up missing there there was a case where this uh, guy and a girl met online dated for a while um actually went on dates in person and everything decided that you know they're better off as friends later on he tried to drug her and take her, you know, take her somewhere. But she knew something wasn't right and refused to go with him. And someone came to her and helped her actually leave him, which pissed the guy off. But still, you know, this is a person that she dated and probably had sexual intercourse with. And he tried to drug her. And so, yeah, you can't trust people that you know. You really can't. So... I mean, I wasn't even allowed to go in, like, to my uncle's, like, my dad's brother or my dad's sister. I wasn't allowed to go with them unless they knew the code and it was an emergency or if it was already planned. Like, my mom told me, hey, you know, your Uncle Bobby or your Uncle Houston's going to come and pick you up from school, which they often did. Mm -hmm. And, but other than that, I wasn't allowed to go in unless my mom knew that I was going with them or my dad knew just smart it's safer that way like I mean even like I was still able to go to the store by myself like go in while my mom waited out in the car if it was just something quick yeah because you know she knew that like nobody could really do anything to me because I knew what to do like she taught me yeah the safety precautions which is sadly not taught to kids now they just think that oh it's okay now the majority of the children don't play outside like we now (laughs) there's more cases now of the abductions and stuff that people are not letting their kids out Mm -hmm. i don't but they're still not they're still not safe because they trust people trust other family members way too easily Oh, yeah. And those are the those are the people that you need to like watch for sometimes. Definitely, I can definitely vouch for that firsthand experience. That family not is your family. So, guys, you have to be very proactive out here if you have children. You go over a game plan with them. Do a precautions list. You know, do a safety plan. What will you do if somebody that you don't know? up to you this is very important then as an adult adults go missing too so you need to have a safety plan for yourself you know I've always told people check your car if you happen it regardless if it's during the day you see people actually break into cars during the day yeah but when you are alone especially if you're a woman if you are alone and you're walking out to your car I always double check my back seat always like I on my way into my front seat I always look into the back seat make sure that you know there's nothing odd in there well like check your check your surroundings when you're pumping gas um newer cars now I know my car I have to have the door unlocked to op- to open up my my gas yeah um, my my gas thing so I have to have my door unlocked and people can easily, if you're so distracted, people can easily sneak in to the car and you not notice. 
another tip that I do is I like to keep a key between my two fingers. Just keep it out there. Believe it or not, a key will do more damage than a sharp blade. So I like to keep a key between my fingers when I'm walking alone. And I like to listen. I try. You, the best thing to do is not to walk with headphones in. You you want to listen to things. Not only listen, but you want to be observant and look around. It's just best to be proactive about your safety because more and more people are going missing. There's a lot of people that go missing to the black market for organ harvesting. And it's usually the minority that happens to, but it can happen to the higher class white people too. So everybody needs to pay attention to their surroundings. Definitely. And come and up like with- if you can let people know what you're up to. And I know it's not a lot of people's business and you don't have to say it in detail, but anytime I'm going somewhere new, I always either tell Amber or I'm telling my sister, Hey, you know, I have, I'm doing this around this time. Or if I'm visiting them, I always tell them or try to tell them, Hey, I'm leaving now. So they know like a time frame and if I'm not there within that time frame then something is wrong if I hadn't called my mom saying that I'm gonna be late we my mom and I share each other's location on iPhone that way when we go somewhere especially out of state like my mom will say hey I'm leaving track me so I can watch her trip so if she's in one spot too long I call her and say hey is everything okay what's going on oh I'm just stopped that a rest stop cool okay if she doesn't answer like for a long time if I can't get a hold of her for a while and I try to call people that I know that she'll talk to nobody can get a hold of her I'm going to uh, report it to the authorities with the last known location right so it's very um, do the tracker thing with the family it's not a bad thing to have somebody looking out for you because you know sometimes more eyes are in your two eyes you know you might be too busy driving not knowing that you're being followed hey you have to be vigilant yeah you really have to everybody nowadays just have you know don't really care they think that if you're in a good neighborhood or whatever then you're safe if you live there for all your life you're safe you know all the people you just you may never know you may know a person for a long time and you know, they're just up to no good. Yeah. I always say you're never too safe. Right. You never are. So be hyper vigilant. Just go be beyond, be bougie with your vigilance. But And I mean, it's okay when you're, when you have kids and like, I see it now, you know, having nieces and nephews, like my, I always thought that it was, you know, horrible that my mom was right up my butt all the time yeah but like now you know I see why she did so you know it's very hard to trust people regardless if they're family or not and it's like I've got to be able to see you know what they're doing who they're talking to you know who are their parents and you know like I'm more than happy to host like my niece and nephew's friends in my place because then I can see them yeah and I'll be more than happy to talk to their parents but you know I won't like I'm not trusting with people so it's like no like you can you can come here and and hang out and play or go outside to where I can see you yeah but you best believe you're not gonna be out there when it's dark I'm like that, like with my children, they're never anywhere that I'm not, they've never spent any, uh, spent the night anywhere that I'm not. The only place that I allow them to be without me, that I trust them to be, is with my mother-in-law's at her house or with Arian at her house. Those two are the only places that they can go without me and stay for a while. Arian usually keeps my kids on all the breaks from school. But we talk daily. We video chat daily. I know my kids are safe every day. You know, with my mother-in-law, the same thing. I know that they're safe. But with everybody else, I don't trust anybody with my kids. I just don't. So I go everywhere they go. 
Right. And I mean, it's okay as parents. It's completely okay if your kids, you know, get angry with you and and stuff because you just, you know, you want to keep them safe and you want to make sure that nothing, you know, happens to them. Yeah, and just- if you do happen to give your children cell phones um, at a young age, make sure you have the tracker on it. Always. Because, I mean, kids will lie to you no matter like how trusting they are and like you know you they will depending on the peer pressure that they have they can and will lie so just make sure you have a tracking I would not you know tell the child that hey I have a tracking on your cell phone because that's the first thing that they're gonna do if they want to hang out with friends and have that cell phone is leave it somewhere yeah So just make sure that the tracking is on that phone. A lot of them, especially if you go to like Verizon and T-Mobile, you tell them that it's for your child. They actually will make sure that that is available for you to track. I know with iPhone, you can get notified if someone that you're following leaves or enters a, a different place. Like with my mother, it would notify me if she left. Like she stopped somewhere, I'd get a notification. If she left, I'd get a notification. And I like that because then I know my mother is on the move. She's doing she's safe. Call or text her, hey, you still good? You know, I like that. As much as yeah. we be bigger, that's still my mom. I, you know, I like the fact that we have that, that location sharing option where I'm 30 years old and we still protect each other. Yeah, make sure that if that, you know, um, register y'all's phones for your address. There's also, if you happen to have T-Mobile, so there is, if you go into your T-Mobile app, you can actually see all the phone calls and phone numbers, basically, whether it's a text message or they actually did a outgoing call even if it's deleted on your phone. Good. So it actually keeps track of all the phone numbers that you could that you could see in anybody in your family plan. So as long as they're in your family plan, you can go in with your phone, click on their number and see anybody that they've called. Um, if there is an unknown number that you don't know of, it tells you the phone number and how long they were either calling um, or talking on the phone. And then it will send, tell you how many text messages back and forth were sent, if any of them were pictures. So they can, you know, they can delete it as much as they want on their phone, but they cannot delete it off of the T-Mobile app. And that's really good for tracking purposes of, as well, because then you can call back some of the numbers and see who they are if it's a possible suspect or not so please 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 take good care of yourselves watch your surroundings don't alert your sight be overprotected be extra as necessary let's keep ourselves and our children safe and alive for much longer yeah definitely and it's not a bad thing to teach them about a a code if anything should happen to you um just you know teach them a code and just let them know that that's for them to keep and if they need to have somebody pick them up they will be notified of that code if they don't know that code then you know tell them the safety procedures on how to escape danger and it's okay if you want to teach your kids self-defense definitely at an early age so definitely especially with girls because we're not as strong as boys well my daughter is she's stronger than boys well she's got two brothers and then she's got her dad who's a big man so (laughs) i mean yeah (laughs) so i mean it's okay teach him Teach them self-defense. Teach them how to protect themselves with the nearest object that they have. If 
I mean, my dad taught me there was a little latch in the trunk if I happened to get kidnapped and be pushed into a trunk. He actually put me in a trunk and showed me where the latch is. That's good. So definitely teach your kids any precautions on vehicles. Um, on their cell phones, there's the emergency numbers immediately. Um, and there is actually a safety app. If your kids or yourself, you feel da- um, I got to look it up because it was on Dr. Phil. Um, so you press, you press on this app, you hold your finger down. If it um, is longer than I think 20 seconds, if your fingers down holding it for more than 20 seconds, they will automatically ping where your location is and it will notify the nearest police department. Um, also, iPhone users, if you hold down your power button, um, Siri can call the police for you. So definitely, you know, and if you guys have teenagers, make sure that they have their cell phones fully charged, chargers, anything. Um, if they go out by themselves and even adults, like I never leave my house without my cell phone charger, even if my phone is at full battery and I'm just going five minutes down the road this, like I have a charger specifically for my car get cre- create a, like a protection kit for your children I believe all children should have pepper spray and a taser yeah definitely my dad taught me how to do the um, pepper spray and taser when I was young so I think all children should be properly taught how to use those objects, keep them with them when they're going places. And also it doesn't hurt for them to carry a flashlight with extra back with them as well, just in case they happen to need that. So create a safety kit, create a safety plan and just be hyper vigilant guys. But this is all I have today. It was just a discussion of this case. It was very intriguing still 19 years later. And Bethany has not been found. And I just would like everybody to keep their eyes peeled. And I will post a picture of her at that age and how they did the age progression for what she may look like. So let's be um, vigilant and looking for her as well. As let's bring Bethany home if we can. But that's it for today, guys. And we'll get back at you on Sunday with another recap and maybe something we don't know we'll see on sunday guys night signing out